Rick Carlson, Sharp Spring Guru, all the way from Gainesville, Florida. Thanks for putting down your tailgate red solo cup for a few minutes to enlighten us on the world that is Sharp Spring. How the heck are you? I am good, but I need to correct this right right off the bat. I uh -oh. need to make a correction. Uh -oh. There is no reasonable gator that would have a red solo cup. We are getting orange and blue cups. Oh, my gosh. You if you're going to be that analytical. And, you know, I, I got to talk with your team because I'm an LSU Tiger. And if I'd have yeah. known you were a Florida Gator, this we might, never would have happened. Yeah, I understand completely. Well, uh, well, we got our butts kicked worse by Alabama than you guys did. So, um, you know, at least we have that in common. Somebody's got to stop that roll tide. But anyway, hey, we'll all that out. let's just let's just focus on business for the moment because I'm I'm getting getting yep. here, man. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So Deal. tell Thanks us about me. Sharp Spring. I, I've looked at it for a while. Uh, I like it. It's, uh, but you seem to be a little more focused towards agency. So maybe we can touch on that uh, a little bit as well during our time together. But, you know, can you kind of give us the, maybe a short history of how Sharp Spring came to be and then we'll, we'll dive into the features? Sure, uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, again, thanks for being here, uh, uh, having me here. I appreciate it. I'm uh, so I'm Rick Carlson. I'm the founder of Sharp Spring, one of one of two founders. Um, we founded the business. Uh, we now have about four years ago, we founded the business. We now have about 150 employees. Um, we're a tiny publicly traded company. Actually, we're traded on the NASDAQ um, ticker symbol SHSP. Um, and we founded the company with the goal of bringing really complex technology, marketing automation um, technology down to the small to medium business. And what we wanted to do with that goal, if we were gonna be successful, is, is really make it tremendously affordable and make it tremendously easy to use. And we feel like we excel in both of those um, areas. Um, as we started to launch a couple of years ago, we really started the company four years ago, but we only launched um, less than three years ago. Uh, we realized that digital marketing agencies really were um, at the forefront of adoption of this technology for small businesses, and they were also an underserved market. So we focused um, heavily on digital marketing agencies, and today, uh, we still focus on digital marketing agencies. It's uh, roughly 90% of our revenues um, are from digital agencies. And these are the thought leaders in the space. These are the guys who get it. They know how to use it. They implement it for businesses of all shapes and sizes. And we have, in just the last two and a half years, um, grown to be the number one, excuse me, number two um, uh, marketing automation platform uh, for digital marketing agencies, and we're catching up with HubSpot, who is the number one company that's out there. Wow. So that means in two and a half years, we've passed Marketo, Eloqua, um, Infusionsoft, Pardot, uh, and the list goes on and on as best as we can tell. So we've got, you know, more than 1,100 digital agencies that are bringing our, our technology to their customers, and we have more than 5,000 businesses on the platform um, utilizing the service. So um, wow. grown, we've grown past um, just being marketing automation. We've got an integrated CRM. We're one of the first companies to do that along with Infusionsoft and HubSpot. So we've really got a whole end to end seamless package and we really feel like we excel on the, on the cost side, but also on the ease of use side um, because we built this product from the ground up to be, to be easy to use. So that's, that's kind of the overview of, uh, of sharp spring. Cool. Well, I learned some things there. Um, how, I don't know, this could turn into a whole sales podcast interview. Uh, we may have to schedule another time because, uh, sure. how you got started, you know, how you launched. Cause I mean, launching a platform like this is, it's no easy, simple feat. So, uh, you know, my hat's off to you for, for launching and for that kind of growth. Um, but for those that are considering, you know, the focus here is, is to give people uh, a good overview so they can make an informed decision um, if this platform is right for them and then, you know, they can reach out and, and um, continue the dialogue. So can you show us, I mean, 
what is the secret to your growth? I mean, you talk about ease of use, you talk about marketing automation, you talk about CRM. Uh, so can we, can we lift the hood a little bit and, and dive into it? Yeah, you, you, in terms of kind of looking, getting a little glimpse of the platform and so sure. forth, absolutely we can do that. Um, by the way, uh, on that other topic of kind of our personal growth, um, you know, we, we attribute our personal growth uh, as a company um, to two, two things. Um, the first is blissful ignorance about what it would take to do what we're doing, <laughs> um, um, which led to... Um, unfounded uh, optimism and courage. So <laughs> blissfully ignorant, you can be very courageous. Um, um, and then we had, you know, some, some follow through and some smart people and all that stuff that kind of made it all work. But um, without a doubt, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into when we started it or we wouldn't have been so bold. <laughs> and, this, and the second big, big thing is that we built our entire business on our own platform. Nice. So we use our platform today to build our business is one of the reasons we grew so fast. And it's also one of the reasons that the platform is so rooted in what a real small business needs, you know, so you need to know what's working and what doesn't with your marketing. Um, we need that kind of end to end ROI, but in a, a digestible way, not, not just a bunch of numbers that are meaningless. Um, we want practical lead nurturing and, and, uh, tools to help you grow your business and so forth. So, um, just kind of bringing that, we like to use, and I, I, I apologize to all the users in advance for the overused funnel comparison, but um, but we use the funnel and we think about that constantly, um, and, and we build a set of tools to widen the entire funnel, okay, right. um, from top to bottom. So um, just to kind of give you an idea of what that means, um, we think of our marketing automation platform and our, our software with an included CRM um, as really widening the entire funnel and, and, and providing three critical benefits at the highest level. First, driving more leads into your business, okay? So we, we provide a suite of tools to help you drive more leads into your business. The second thing we do is provide another set of tools to help you nurture those leads and better convert those leads once that you once you have them. So we're driving leads into the business, we're converting those leads into sales, which is what everybody wants to do. Um, and, and then there's a set of analytics tools that help you measure and understand that entire process. As a small business, waste is um, you can't have it. You know, you're not a big corporation. You can't have 60% of your organization working on stuff that doesn't work. You need to be laser focused on what works and what doesn't. So we provide the analytics on the process, the conversion rates, the, the end to end tracking. So I'm paying for leads on Google, um, uh, through Google AdWords, which of this, what, what's actually turning into sales, not just leads, giving, giving mm -hmm. that end, end to end perspective for the sole purpose of being able to eliminate the things that aren't working and doubling down on the things that are. And of course that helps you drive more leads and then convert those leads into sales, right? right. So it's pretty circular. So that's a, those are our three big objectives. And um, so we kind of use this funnel and we talk about that. Um, so in terms of the, the platform, it's a fully featured marketing automation platform and CRM. Up here at the top of the funnel, when we think about driving um, leads for a business, we have everything that you would expect. We have something we call visitor ID that helps you anonymous, uh, uh, identify the 98% of your visitors that don't fill out a form um, that are coming to your site. We, it's anonymous web visitor identification um, there so that your, your, your viewership gets the right idea. We're identifying the companies that are coming to your website, not Joe Bob sitting behind his desk and you know at um, Corporation X. Um, but we can we can tell you who's coming to your site, um, so you can do some outbound marketing. We have a really robust, um, really next generation email platform, um, something we call dynamic emails that actually respond to the. Uh, to the uh, persona or individual characteristics of the reader 
of that email. Um, you know, up at the top, we've got things like the AdWords integration and analytics to help you understand what, what leads, uh, lead sources are actually working for you. We've got a dynamic landing page builder. Again, like our dynamic email um, landing pages that actually adapt to the person who's viewing them. And I can talk a little bit more about that um, if you've got some interest. I think I've got a slide on that. We've got a blogging tool and RSS. So as you're writing your blogs, we're sending out emails on behalf of um, to your to your our, your blog subscribers, letting them know there's new content out there. So a whole set of tools up here at the at the at the top of the funnel. Um, so to, are you on, on the blogging side? So are, are you like how HubSpot had started, where you have the marketing automation and you provide blogging and like landing page capability, but does the does the customer still keep their own website? Yeah, so we, we are, so I mentioned already that we work with digital uh, marketing agencies and one of the ways we separate ourselves from every other marketing automation platform out there is that we try to be tremendously flexible, okay? Because when we sign up a digital agency, we're really signing up their 10 or 20 clients, right? That are all using different CMSs and different CRMs. So. Um, we have a built-in CRM, but we also integrate with Salesforce.com and through our uh, API and through a bunch of other tools, we integrate with just about every CRM that's out there. To, to bring that back to blogging, which was, I think, the root of your question, we provide a blogging tool for somebody that um, wants to use ours. Um, but we also work with WordPress's blogging tool and, and our RSS emails for that um, would, would work seamlessly with a, a blog that already exists. So we want to give, you know, a marketer the tools to get up and running very, very quickly in case they're not doing this stuff. Right. With existing platforms, we tend to work with all of them. I mean, right. just a blanket statement. So it's very, very different where we're, we're you know, very, very flexible. It's a lot of hard work um, to be flexible like that, but we're, we're pretty proud of the steps that we've taken um, uh, to make it, make it so flexible. Um, this is just a slide here. We got dynamic forms, of course. So we have dynamic landing pages and dynamic forms built into the app. Um, just uh, touching on this, I think we talked about um, dynamic landing pages. This is a, the exact same landing page, okay? So imagine for a second that you're, in this particular case, you're, uh, you're running a travel agency, and you know that, uh, we'll call this gentleman over here Bob, and we'll call this other lady Susie here, you know that Bob is interested in, uh, what is that, a seascape back there? Or maybe snow, I can't tell. No, it's um, Alaska. The yeah, movie right, movie Bob. Of Alaska. Right. He's an adventure guy. And oh, yeah, Alaska. Thank you. An adventure guy. And he's really likes cold weather destinations. We know this from his trip history. We can send him an email that's tailored one email that tailors our messages and our imagery and our calls to action and and everything um, tailored to him and his interests. And then that same exact email can be sent to, I think I called her Susie um, here, and, um, and, and have uh, the same email adapt to her interests. Mm -hmm. And then that email can be click, clicked on and lead to a landing page that does exactly the same thing. Right. right? So why do we care about all that stuff? And, and this is an example of kind of the emails that would go along with these, with these landing pages. Well, um, we care about all that stuff because if you're tailoring your message to your leads' interests, I probably don't need to tell you or anybody else, that means conversions. Mm -hmm. that, means, that means sales, right? It's not some generic email that has a low conversion rate and click-through rate and open rate um, and ultimately sales conversion rate. This is, hey, I'm painting a picture for you about your interests and what your um, – uh, you know, what's, what's going to make you most likely to buy. And so it's not just, we could use lead scoring. If you're, for, if you and your readers are familiar with lead scoring, sure. uh, we could use any attribute that we know about the lead essentially that's on the lead record to tailor these messages. So um, we could have a landing page respond to somebody with a very low lead score who seems to be at the beginning of the sales cycle. 
we could have them, uh, we could offer them white papers or education materials that kind of bring them further down the funnel. We can see that person with a high lead score that's very engaged, that looks a little bit like they're ready to make a purchase. And we could offer on that landing page, uh, you know, some sort of call to action, discount, whatever, um, mm -hmm. to really get that sale closed. So, so these dynamic um, tools can be used in a variety of ways, all pointed towards conversion and revenue. Right. Um, this is the promise of marketing automation kind of more than anything else um, right. that I can think of. Um, talked a little bit about that anonymous web visitor identification um, with visitor ID. Here's kind of a screenshot of that. So we're going to track the visitors and show marketers um, the people that they know about that are already in their database. Hey, Wes just came back to the site and Wes seems to be interested more in the CRM than the marketing automation piece. So let's send Wes this or that about the CRM. We can see all that in visitor ID. We can also see, hey, HubSpot's concerned about what SharpSpring is doing and it looks like their product managers are visiting here, um, checking, ah. out our, checking out our new feature. Not that that ever happens. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so that's visitor ID. So th those are just kind of a few of the things that we do at the top but of the When you say anonymous or I mean, are you using some behind the scenes stuff to make that visitor uh, non-anonymous? Yeah, and now there are limits to this and I don't want right. to overpromise a certain feature, um, but what we're really doing is identifying the, the company, right? Okay. So, you know, I, I can't see past that firewall and know a specific person is there, but if, if you're a small business and you're targeting other small businesses, it can be really, really useful to know XYZ company right. came to your website. If you're you know, typically selling the marketing director at XYZ company, you can find that person knowing that that person has been there um, and, and follow up with more targeted advertising or sales efforts. Um, so yeah, we use um, something called reverse IP lookup yep. to identify the servers in which they are you know, visiting from. And assuming that that company has got a dedicated IP address, which, you know, reasonable sized companies tend to do, tend to have dedicated IPs, um, then we can identify who that company is. Um, and then we actually have services where we give you contacts, names and phone numbers and email addresses of contacts at each one of these companies. No. Oh. Yeah, so I can't tell you that's the person who came there, but here's the marketing director and here's their phone number and here's their email address. Um, so we, and that's built into our service and we offer that for free, well free, um, and meaning included in our license fee. Right. An unlimited amount of, of, of those lookups. Um, so it really helps your prospecting up at the top of the funnel. And so what's like a, a typical size? Like if, um, you know, I got friends of mine own a little, family owned restaurant in town. Yeah. yeah. yeah they're probably using everybody here has Verizon Fios for the most part. Sure. I mean, yeah. would they have their own IP address? And so, you know, I could say, Hey, you know, yeah. Vince's spaghetti is looking me up. Maybe I should mm. call them. Or are they too small? Yeah, sure. There's a sweet spot for this particular feature in our platform. Okay. It doesn't work on very small companies because you're exactly right. They're using, you know, Verizon or Bright House or whatever, and they're not going to have a dedicated IP. And we're not going to be able to say, hey, that's yeah. the pizza place down the street. At the top end, we're going to be able to tell you, hey, General Electric visited your site. Right. But that's useless too, right? Because, you know, you which yeah. of the 100,000 employees that they, that work for them visited your site, you know, that's kind of a dead end. But there's a whole lot of companies, a whole lot of companies that are bigger than that, uh, that small pizza shop that do have a dedicated um, IP address. And, and, and clearly, by the way, as we're talking, you can see this is a very B2B centric from the, right. from the anonymous part. This is a very B2B centric feature. Um, but there's a lot of companies, a lot of, we, we target small businesses, right? Um, these right. typical agencies we see. Hey, some agency that we don't know about has clearly heard about us. Um, they're not a partner yet. We see them. We can, we can call those guys and say, hey, so you were checking us out. Can we be of help? Um, definitely a sweet spot, but it's a pretty big sweet spot. 
imagine if they had like, I don't know, like a sales whisperer that created like a 10 step outreach, including voicemail scripts for getting through gatekeepers and decision makers, emails to plug into sharp spring. Imagine the power. But, uh, the only I, thing I digress. The only thing that would make that better if the guy's name was Wes, right? I mean, I think I, I know a, that would be like magic. They could plug be, this in the Sharp Spring, bam, yeah. close the deal. But anyway, yeah, well, we can all wish and hope, but uh, know, come on, let's that get exists. back to reality here. If only so, that. Uh, all right. Um, so you got a little bit of 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 a flavor of what's at the top. This is not designed to be you know, comprehensive, right? Um, we could talk for hours on this and uh, I'm sure your folks have better things to do. Towards the middle of the funnel, we have a whole nother suite of tools. Um, so just to give you an idea of those, we're talking about things like email now, right? Dynamic, uh, um, uh, you know, drip campaigns that are responsive to um, that are responsive to the actions of the user, whether they're engaging with your email or not. Um, we have list building so you can better um, segment your customers. And here, this is not boring demographic list building. We're able to create lists based on people's behavior. So imagine for a second, you know, you want to create um, an ongoing dynamic list. And I know I've used the word dynamic a lot these days. Um, but a, this, in this case, dynamic means it updates automatically. We can keep a running list of everybody with a lead score above 50 and below 100 that has visited product, product number three's page, product page, you know, three times or more. So mm -hmm. they're clearly interested in that particular product. They're clearly at this point in the, their purchase decision because they're kind of a hot lead. We can keep that list dynamic and then be using that list to market to those people in exactly the right way with exactly the right messages because they know we know they're interested in product number three. Or, or we know they're interested in product number three and this particular feature and they're from this part of the country and, you know, whatever. The, the possibilities are endless here. Um, so that's kind of middle, like once we've got these leads, what do we do with them? Uh, I've talked a lot about lead scoring already. This is our, our way of taking all these behaviors and reducing and, and demographic fits and so forth and reducing that to a number that says, hey, this is a lead that, that fits your company and is, and is ready to buy or they need to be worked on from marketing's perspective before sales touches them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. And we th we think we've already talked about all the tracking that we do um, that really makes everything I'm talking about today possible. So um, just to give you kind of an idea of that, this is a, a little example of our, um, of our tracking capability. This is part of our interface. And um, we have something that we call the life of the lead. And on the life of the lead, we track... I think literally every meaningful communication that a business has with a prospect. And when I say every meaningful communication, let me give you an example. First, you know, we pull in social interactions and we give you, um, you know, links to their Facebook pages and LinkedIn profiles and so forth. We've got all that. But down here on this life of the lead, we're going to see every web page visit and every page on every web page visit. Every form that's been filled out by this person, they go to download a white paper, we're going to see that. We're going to see all the media that they've looked at, that you've, you know, you've created all this content. Hey, they looked at this video that you, you put out. Um, we know they've seen that. Um, we, we look at um, every email that we've ever sent them. We have IMAP synchronization, so your sales people and so not just automated emails on this list, but all your interactions with the lead between your, your salesperson and the lead, that's all captured. And you don't have to, it's not cumbersome. You don't have to BCC or uh, you've seen those kind of wonky right. tools where you've got a BCC an address or CCC it and then they don't reply to all so you don't capture their replies. We do all this stuff seamlessly at the server level. Right. Um, so all, all email communication, phone calls, um, web visits, media that's download, 
deal stage changes are on here. So as the person moves through the funnel from a from the investigation phase to the you know discovery and needs analysis and and contract negotiation and um, you know price negotiation and closing, all that's captured on here. And we provide both sales with with all the stuff that happened before the sales team was involved with all that info, and we provide marketing with all the stuff hap- that happened afterwards. So finally, the organization can see exactly what it takes to close a deal, right? right. It's, it's a lot. It's more than anybody really realizes. Right. Um, so we do all that on what we call our life of the lead. Um, lead scoring, I talked a little bit about that. You create um, behavior and demographic-based um, rules that score leads and really kind of identify the hot leads out of your database that sales should be working on and the folks that really marketing should be working on in a more intense way, getting them ready for sales, and then the folks that you're kind of nurturing over time, hoping they become a, a warm or hot lead um, as they move through your, your sales and marketing process. Mm-hmm. Um, touched on dynamic list building, just some screenshots of the app. I don't want to bore you with it. Um, and then down at the bottom of the funnel, we talked about it. Now, we, we've got a whole suite of tools. We've, again, built in CRM. I'll show you a few screenshots of that. But we also work with Salesforce in a two-way synchronization so we can pass uh, data back and forth. I know you're an Infusionsoft uh, fan as well. You should be. There's a great tool, and I, I um, uh, have a lot of respect for those guys. Um, I do want to point out that you know one of the neat things about SharpSpring is that you can start with our CRM, and um, when you're ready to graduate to something like Salesforce, I mean, if, if if we do our jobs as a marketing automation platform and a business does their job, they're going to grow, and as they grow larger and they want to seamlessly move over and outgrow potentially our CRM and want to work with a you know more of an enterprise solution or a larger business solution. We can make that happen pretty seamlessly because we work with both. Mm -hmm. Um, Contrast that with Infusionsoft today is more of a closed system, kind of with that platform, um, which I think is has real benefits for small businesses and potentially a little bit constricting, um, you know, as you grow larger. So they even they outgrew their own CRM. Yeah, well, Infusionsoft doesn't use Infusionsoft, right? So yeah. um, well, they, they they use the automation. Yeah, even some of that they've changed, but uh, we yeah. can dive in. Yes, but you know they well, they're a know, large enterprise. That's tough, you know, because they they did. They're a seven hundred person company, and you know, yep. some people have beaten them up for not using their own stuff. They said, "Look, we." we're not going to change. We're not going after the enterprise, you know, right. You're supporting small business, you know, one to, you know, or five to 25 employees. And they're like, if you grow beyond that, you may have to leave us. So they've, they, and that's about a year ago, really. They, they got put some clarity around that and they, so, you know, I think that's tough. I to don't, see. I don't blame them a bit for using an enterprise solution. And, you know, with 700 employees, you want to, you want to use the best solution for your business. Yeah. Where when that cutoff is 25 employees though, and you've standardized on essentially a closed platform, what, you know, there, what do you do? You know, right. when, when, you know, the, and we try to talk to customers about that. Um, again, fantastic all in one solution. I, I, um, but it is a difference between ourselves and Infusionsoft that I do want to point out. Oh yeah. Um, because it's, because it's real. So, um, well, who do you really see as more of a direct competitor? Is it more like Acton and HubSpot versus yeah. Fusionsoft or Entreport? Absolutely. You know, right. we certainly bump into Infusionsoft quite a bit, actually. Right. Um, but uh, for us, it's it's HubSpot um, because we've really got that breadth of tools out there, and um, you know, they work with agencies quite a bit, and so do we. So we bump into those guys a lot more. Uh, but I, I would say Infusionsoft is our second largest competitor oh, wow. uh, in the space. And then certainly we got uh, uh, Pardot and, and Acton as well. Right. Uh, that kind of fill in the gaps there. So um, we tend to be about a tenth the cost. Um, for our agency partners, we are less than a tenth the cost of those solutions that I just mentioned. Um, 
for, for small businesses, we tend to be less than a third of the cost um, of, a, of a HubSpot um, or a Pardot or, or an ActOn. Um, and that means that you have more money to, to actually spend on lead gen and power these tools or create content and, and so forth. So, um, you know, again, we set out, we have what we, what we really, well, the market has spoken and we've got 5,000 businesses on the platform in, uh, you know, two and a half years. Um, and, and the big reason for that is because of the value that we have in the platform. Um, mm-hmm. It's also something where you can leave month in and month out. So those companies that are on the platform are volunteer to be on the platform month in and month out. We don't have annual contracts. We're never going to trap somebody into working with us. If you don't want to work with us, if we haven't done a good job, if somebody else is doing a better job, we get it. We're going to work harder and do better, but we're not going to trap you into a long-term contract. So, um, so just some of the ways we're different. Right. Um, so good. Uh, just some some thoughts. I mean, we've shown you some of this stuff already. Um, this is just an example. This is a contact record in our CRM. You've got notes. You've got the lead score available to you. Social integration. Um, these are collaborative notes where all users can come in and you know work on a deal together. We've got pretty great um, sales funnel reporting where we can show you the value of your pipeline, where every deal sits in your pipeline, mm-hmm. and the raw scores as well as the expected value of all the deals in those pipelines. And then we sum that up for you and we say, you know, based on the, the deals that are in your pipeline and their stages, we give you an expected value of the pipeline in terms of it closing at the end of the month or any date that you specify. We'll look at all the deals that are expected to close during that time. Um, so really great reporting. And as you can see, we try to be very visual and try to kind of show how things, um, how all these pieces are fitting together. Because one of the real challenges is these tools are powerful. Right. And power often means complexity. And we try real hard to, to kind of overcome that. Um, easy to use, easy to understand campaign insights. This is where your leads are coming from. Based on these campaigns, this is how much revenue we think is going to be coming in because we're tracking, you know, the source and the cost along with the current place in the pipeline. Um, incidentally, we aren't just B two B focused. We have um, a shop. We have shopping cart integrations. Again, we'll work with any shopping cart, just about any shopping cart, um, and allow you to track end to end ROI. Send shopping cart abandonment emails. Hey, you. You left the cart with these products in it. Um, you know, was there a problem? Here's a 10% uh, uh, coupon or what have you. So we give you all kinds of B2C oriented tools. And, um, you know, there's a, I got a bunch of, I'm going to not uh, put your readers through a bunch of sales <laughs> stuff or, you know, a bunch of people say, hey, we've got a bunch of people that say great things about us. How about we do that? Well, I love when people say, well, do you have any referrals, you know, or testimonials? And I always ask them, do you want just the good ones? Yeah, right. You right. know, it's like, right. it's such a crazy question. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's right. So, what are you really looking for? Because, yes, we have the good ones, you know, yeah. and, and we delete the bad ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. We absolutely do. It's helpful to talk. I mean, we, you know, um, it's helpful to talk to folks who are using platforms. I recommend it as, as a, um, you know, but to get that extra layer down, but right. right on, you know, what is a really good at? What is it? Where, where are the weak spots? Um, yeah, yeah that, that's just a high level, um, high level overview of Sharp Spring. It's a, it's a comprehensive platform that really helps from the very top of the funnel and generating leads converting them all the way through the funnel down to the bottom where they're flowing into the CRM. And then we measure that whole process and, and really help you refine it. So you get the maximum results out of your sales and marketing efforts. Um, one thing that keeps coming up is mobile apps. Do you have a, a mobile version? Well, um, yeah, we have a, we have a, um, a mobile app for our CRM. Okay. So, 
when you're trying to build workflows and things, there's some real practical limitations to trying to do that on a phone, sure. or really even a tablet. Yeah. You know, this is the kind of thing you sit down in front of your desktop and you, you know, it's roll up your sleeves and you, you, you think strategically and you, you build your marketing uh, workflows. But we absolutely have a, um, a mobile version of our CRM, which allows people to take notes and make right. phone calls, right. and record interactions and have all their contacts with them. You know, we can do things like send text messages with our automation. Hey, the Wes is back on the site and he looks ready to buy. You might want to give him a call. Um, we can do that in real time. Uh, so that, should, that'll message the staff, like a, a salesperson? Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. sure. As, a, as part of a workflow, if you want that to happen, we can send you an email when things happen. We like to talk about turning a website into a two-way communication tool. So instead of a billboard where we're only talking to customers, now we're dynamic, so we're talking to, we're having individual conversations with customers because the website's responding to that customer. Right. And we're turning around and notifying the organization, the sales team, the marketers, exactly what's happening on the website in real time. Right. So the website itself becomes this really dynamic two-way communication tool. Well, the, you know, the thing that is just really coming, we're coming clear for me as I dive into tools like yours and seeing all this is that companies, they need to get help, right? They need to hire an agency because this is, you know, I've been working in these platforms since 2007 yep. with, with tools that do if then sort of marketing, the dynamic, the AB split testing, and yeah. I can't tell you how many people, you know, they're, well, does it do A-B split testing, right? So for many years, Infusionsoft didn't, and it still kind of doesn't. you got to work around it. You know, yeah. I, I would ask them, how many emails have you even sent in the last six months? You know, <laughs> and they're like, right. one, one or two. I, so was, I'm, I'm like, let's get you sending one regularly before yeah. we worry about sending two versions of one. Yeah, that's right. You know, like your early example with the guy from Alaska, Alaska trips and Mary interested in the desert, right? And Egypt. Yep, yep. Uh, that is very advanced stuff. I mean, that's like, that puts a small business on par with like Amazon, right? right. To be able yep. to, hey, you bought an iPhone, you may like an iPhone case or a lightning cable or, you know, a tripod or, you know, a, a MacBook Pro, right? Could you have an app? So, that is, you know, there's not like two dudes at Amazon just hacking away. I mean, they got a big team. And so having somebody, having an agency that is competent in the tool, but also competent in even thinking this way. The strategy. It's right? the strategy. Yeah, That's it's right. so different. I mean, if, if you're good at computer programming or you're good uh, at making pizzas, you know, you're good at planning vacations, it doesn't mean you're good at creating personas and these if then variables and should this be dynamic based on mobile or based on life cycle stage or right. it's just, you know, hire somebody that's good at this stuff. It's, uh, um, that is sage advice right there. That's absolutely true. You're just, it's, it's too complex. Um, yeah. Social email campaigns, ROI personas, uh, dynamic content, um, the list goes on and on and on. I do want to point out one thing um, because you, you know, I realized I was remiss in saying this. These pages that we're looking at right now, no developer required. Nice. So, so I want to change out these images based on somebody, a persona or a, or a field. I right click on the image in our landing page builder and I say make dynamic. And I say, if it's, if it's the CEO persona, or in our case, you know, the, we have a persona Debbie designer, that's more the designer that works, you know, then show this image or, to, right. or display this text. Uh, I talked about Sharp Spring being really easy to use. 
that does not take away from your point that you need to know the strategies. You need right. to know all this stuff. And do I, do I use personas here or is it more about life cycle, you know, a buying cycle, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's, it's like desktop publishing, right? Remember when that came out? Yeah. We right. can all write our own books. I'll just use Word and drag yeah. some pictures and no need for help with that. Yeah. How'd that go, buddy? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Exactly. People still exactly. have a book in them, you know, 15 years later and they haven't done it. So that's right. You know, it's, it's good to get good, smart people to help you uh, in these areas because it's, just because you can click on an image and swap it out doesn't mean you have the right image or that you even need an image. Maybe you maybe it needs to be all, all text and, and pull them in that way. Maybe it should be a video. That's right. right. So there's just so many things. And, um, but man, the fact you've created all of this with just 150 people in four years is amazing. We, um, we have an unbelievable team that one of the best decisions I ever made was building this company outside of a university. Um, you know, we, we're, uh, uh, as we started off, we're right here in uh, Gainesville, Florida and the University of Florida. And we just have a talented, motivated team. It's been, uh, it's been extremely rewarding. So, so awesome. there's, uh, there's that as well. All right. Well, well done. I will uh, I'll link to your site and your social media. Any particular area I should send them? Um, yeah, no, uh, uh, sharp, sharpspring.com. We'd love to hear from anybody who's uh, interested in, um, you know, these tools. Um, again, you know, very low barriers to entry, inexpensive, month-to-month billing. Um, anybody who's interested, amazing agency program, un- un- untouchable. Um, that's why, you know, these agencies are building their business around Sharp Springs. So, um, but amazing value for end customers as well, small businesses. And then again, we've got this whole kind of ecosystem of agencies to your point where if you feel like you need help, we've got folks that can, um, provide that help. Um, thousands of them, in fact. Um, so, uh, so yeah, would love to, love to hear from, uh, from your readership and really or, or viewership and really appreciate the uh, opportunity, Wes. Oh, one more question. Do y'all, do you have any type of conference? You know, like Infusionsoft has Icon and they have a partner conference and HubSpot has their inbound. Do, do you yeah. do a user conference or a partner conference yet? You know, we ha- we're not doing it yet. You know, we, we're, st- we're in just our third year. We're less, we haven't completed our third year to market yet. Okay. So these other companies have been doing this for a decade. Right, right. And um, we are, amazing ourselves and kind of getting to that size where um where it uh, it actually makes sense and we may uh, well, we should just well. we should start one well you'll be in gainesville one year baton rouge the other you know and oh there you football, go and uh you know we'll just make it happen it's on a football weekend maybe yeah, something maybe, like that huh? maybe that purely yeah. coincidental all right. <laughs> all right i see where you're going <laughs> fantastic <laughs> All right, man. Rick Carlson, founder of Sharp Spring, all the way from Gainesville, Florida. Thanks for uh, being on the CRM Sushi Podcast. Thanks so much, guys. Take care.